what we make is life support equipment, whether it's our descent devices or some of our airdrop equipment. And that's, that's really what Cape Wall brings to the table that's a little different. Really, we've seen an, an uptick in production and a reduction in cycle time just based off of the control programs being the same. We see about a 20% increase from the next gen control in speed and a reduction in cycle time. I am Charles Kamari. We're here at Cape Wall Aerial Systems. I'm the production manager here at Cape Wall and I've been working here for about 12 years now. What we have behind us here in the VF12 is a eight foot side rail. This operation is gonna mill those slots that actually lock our Type 5 platforms into the C-130 so that our, the pilots remain safe from any cargo or any movement like that. And so we're milling those, those locking slots. We're drilling holes for our actuators, for our release assemblies that also get bolted onto the side. On the 5SS, we're milling some connector bodies right now. They go to any platforms that are flying out of the back of aircrafts uh, that we're dropping with resupply with, with life-saving goods. That's what that connects the platform to the parachute. Pretty important component there. And then on the 3SS, we're machining the mating component, which has the little fingers that connect to our release as well. In our VF6 now, we're machining our, our Capewell timer housing. That goes into the Capewell cargo release that I was just mentioning. And really that's the, the secret ingredient that allows the parachute to release and decouple from the platform at the appropriate time. We used to get that in a, in a casting. With the probing, with the faster machining, we were able to get away from the casting and use a solid block or slug and hog that out we're actually saving time, as much time as we were to, to finish a casting, we're roughing and finishing a complete part now. Our lock pits, which go into our frost release and actually lock and hold our, the canopy mating part into the release, those are being turned right now on our live tooling lathe. We used to just turn the OD and then they, we'd have to bring them into a mill on a rotary to cut slots in them at certain angles. Now that's all done at the live tooling lathe where it comes in, it spins to that exact angle, it's able to make those cuts, make those slots, part off the part, so I'm really left with a done piece. Hello, my name is Bill Gorlack. I'm Vice President of Operations and General Manager for Capewell. Our company has a long history of manufacturing. In 1881, Capewell was founded. It was called the Capewell Horse Nail Company at the time. In 1939, we collaborated with the U.S. government and we created the Capewell Release. They're used on all U.S. troop parachute assemblies. The M1 parachute release that would go out with a typical load has a capacity of holding four 100-foot parachutes. So the parts that we're machining in-house here are for that release. When that platform actually lands on the ground, the, the canopies of the parachute will be separated because of this hardware. So a lot of our, our airdrop uh, or parachute hardware equipment has to get tested. We have to know that it works before we allow people to jump out of planes or fly platforms out of the back of planes. Will this hold? So every lot gets tested. We're dealing with people's lives. So whether it's that platform flying over homes or in, into a, a hot zone, people need to make it home safely. People need to make it back to their families. People that have family that jump have that confidence in our product and the, by proxy the product that it's made on.